Monday morning. Let's start the week off in a fantastic way, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna show you what's going on. Legacy Lumber Canadian Woodworks. We just had our vacuum kiln open up and all of this is four quarter Canadian black walnut. Been air drying for about, uh, about two months, somewhere right around there. And this was dried in the vacuum kiln down to six, 7%. And uh, this was about 10 days to do this load. Over at Canadian Woodworks, we had day one of our epoxy coffee table workshop where you come to my workshop, you build your own two foot by four foot epoxy and wood coffee table. And these are the coffee tables that we just had our students do. We had seven of them, uh, three or four in the morning and <laughs> three or four in the afternoon. You can, that adds up to seven, no matter how you do it. And this has been about 48 hours now. It's a little bit colder in my shop because I have not heated it yet, but still doing pretty good. Probably if we push like over, yeah, still a little gooey there. So if you push like in the edges here, epoxy, if you don't know, it generates heat when it cures. So when you have a larger mass, like in the middle of these rivers, especially one like this, there's gonna be more heat being created here. And get rid of this. There's more heat being created here versus the edge here. And also you're dissipating the heat here. So watch, I can actually like, push my finger you can see then in the middle um it's usually pretty much rock solid summertime rock solid like 12 hours later depending on on uh, on the temperature we i like pushing the epoxy i want to get a nice natural exothermic reaction creating this really really cool texture so there's a pretty fine balance between um temperature that you pour versus the epoxy as you see, there's practically zero bubbles, which is nice. So all I'm gonna wait about four or five days, we'll pop these all out. These are no seal, solid HDPE forms. Uh, I had an idea to create these forms, I don't know when, a while ago now. You can purchase them through many, many locations now. There's also being knocked off. So uh, a lot of these forms are my original idea. Other people kind of saw it, saw that they're, they were, good sellers i gotta say and a big shout out to carlos at exotherm designs i uh i gave him this idea and he ran with it and he's now helped out thousands and thousands of other makers uh get these forms at reasonable prices and they're fully fully reusable which i love i'm able just to hit this with a mallet flip it over pop it out put it on my shelf and forget about it there's no remaking the form. There's no leaking epoxy. There's no waste in the garbage pail. And best yet, maybe four, I can't do the four, is money in my wallet. You're not buying more particle board, plywood, uh, tuck tape, silicone, screws, the time. What does that equal? That equals money. I just use water weights. You guys are like, what are all these jugs? They're not full of, oh, they're not full of epoxy, but you can see they just snap off. They're also HDPE, so they just pop off once the epoxy's solid. And we just have them filled with water, and that's how it holds all the wood down. The wood does float. So uh, it was a great day one. Big shout out also to Daniela. She runs the workshop. It's from Smiling Rock Studios. She's a local maker, and she's not doing the fully finished furniture uh, stuff anymore, but uh, she knows her thing, especially with wood and epoxy. She's a fantastic teacher and she handles the coffee table workshop. So yeah, thank you, Daniela. Big shout out to you. I'm also making hard cider. We made a press, we made a lot of cider. So Here's why my shop is not being heated yet. This is my outdoor wood boiler. Unfortunately, it's laying on its side in front of the shop. It has a leak uh, right down in here. You can see it's been tried to get fixed a few times, but finally we had to pull it out. Uh, I cut this hole out of it, and now I gotta get this all cleaned up and figure out how to get this leak fixed once and for all. Other than that, this thing has been a fantastic wood boiler. I got it for a super, super cheap price on Facebook Marketplace. It's an Empire 450, and it's good for like 800,000 square feet. That is a lie. That is a huge building. It does not do 800,000 square feet, 8,000 square feet. Uh, I got another one. It's running, it's heating the two kilns right now. It's, uh, it's hidden over there. Well, there it is. Let me see if I can, yeah, it's over there. Okay, and we're gonna be reloading the vacuum kiln with four quarter Canadian black walnut, cherry, 
So James is working hard. What do we have here? Uh, looks like some walnut heading down to the kiln. Let's head up to the sawmill. We'll see what's going on up here. All right, up here at the wood mines where we got our number one and two employee. You guys can let us know in the comments who you think is one and two. We're cutting four quarter Canadian black walnut. It can go back and forth on the wood miser, slicing it up, making a lot of sawdust. We got a nice pile of logs there. Grab it with the excavator, place it around the sawmill and we cut some boards and then we get it stickered right here and then move it away. So we found it pretty efficient to use the mini excavator. It has a thumb on it. So we're able to grab this size of a log, spin it around, place it on the sawmill and keep on cutting. It seems to work pretty good. We always have logs lying around in queue, waiting to get cut up. This is some of our bigger ones. This is a, a white oak. We've got a big red oak here. We've got a walnut here. Uh, this was a huge walnut tree also that was taken down locally. People ask, hey, where do you get your logs from? We get them from mostly backyards, which is exactly where this log came from. And uh, we'll be slicing it up really soon. Look how weird it grew, eh? How this kind of like branch like turned out of here. Basically, it looks like the one side of the tree kind of died but the other side was very prosperous. Over here, we have our air drying racks. We got some eight quarter ash, straight edge lumber. These are all larger walnut bools. We've got some five quarter walnut, another nice larger walnut bool. We literally have perhaps the largest walnut slabs in Canada right now, air drying right here. They're huge. I'm gonna be putting together a video on getting them sawmilled. Can't a guy make a video without people making noise? Four quarter Canadian black walnut. Actually, this is actually all cherry. Four quarter black cherry stacked up. And then we got walnut, walnut. Nice walnut right there, hello. More walnut. Random stuff. This is all walnut here. So uh, lots waiting for the kilns. Wait, look at these delicious, delicious walnut logs. Sure, this one came with some sort of like, I don't know if it's a security camera or some sort of clothesline, but look at these things. Oh my, oh me, oh my. So we gotta get these on the mill. Okay, we have found the problem. I've die grinded away a bunch of the metal. I'm gonna make a patch that goes from about here uh, up to the top. So I gotta do a little shaping here and then get it welded in. I'm just cutting a piece of steel right now. I'm gonna get it shaped in there. I'm gonna get it welded in. Hopefully get this leaf fixed. I'm gonna run all this lumber through the jointer planer, get it dressed to 23 millimeters. One pass does it all, we scale it and it's getting shipped out in the morning. So we gotta get on it. So there we go. I believe the repair is done, but we're gonna put it right side up, fill it full of water and uh, leave it for the evening. So this is the wood boiler in action. This is the one that's running right now, heating two of our kilns. So pack number one and pack number two ended up being just about a thousand board feet, 964, I think. So this is through the jointer planer right here. It's got a 30 horsepower top head, 30 horsepower bottom head, spiral, uh, pretty darn nice. Leaves a good finish. But this will be getting delivered to the team down at Concept 13 in Mississauga, Ontario, just outside Toronto. And uh, Christmas is coming. He's got some wood for you if you're interested. Get in touch with Rob at Concept 13. I'll put his details in the description below down here this is the vacuum kiln it is getting loaded it's almost uh three quarters of the way uh this is a radio frequency vacuum kiln so we have our air drying lumber that you can see has the stickers so the air goes in between all the layers starts taking away the moisture from the wood 
a vacuum kiln like this, there's no stickers between it because there's no oxygen to be blowing around and taking the moisture away. It's literally being vacuumed out of the wood. 90% uh, plus comes through the end grain, uh, which is pretty, pretty exciting. Has a hydraulic press on the inside also, which for this wood here, not too, too critical, but of course it's gonna help. Uh, and it keeps it nice and flat. And then it has these aluminum sheets right here and the kiln card is negative then we have a positive then a negative then there'll be a positive and then a negative all the way on top and that actually creates the water molecules shaking uh, which creates the heat then under vacuum we dry the wood and this will be in here eight to ten days ish four quarter canadian black walnut uh nice nice material actually well that's it <laughs>